It's something that people may not want to think about, but eventually, humanity will end. The question is, what will be the exact cause of extinction for humans? Will it be something naturally or artificially induced? Let's look into this grim prospect. The Earth is 4.6 billion years old, and throughout time, there have been many different types of organisms that have inhabited the planet. With that, there have been five major mass extinction events, which is actually a minuscule amount on account of how long the Earth has been here. For the first four billion years of the Earth's geological history, life was non-complex, comprising mainly of single-celled to simple-celled multicellular organisms. Then something happened around 540 million years ago known as the Cambrian Explosion. This event marked a significant period of history of life on Earth, characterized by the rapid diversification and appearance of most major animal phyla. During the Cambrian explosion, complex and multicellular organisms with hard parts, such as shells and exoskeletons, evolved and diversified rapidly. From then on, complex organisms became numerous and evolved into marine life, then amphibians, plants, and insects, followed by reptiles, and eventually mammals. However, this didn't come without hiccups. Around 443 million years ago, a mass extinction known as the Ordovician Silurian extinction event occurred, killing 85% of all marine life on the planet. But the largest extinction event ever to occur was the Permian Triassic extinction event 252 million years ago. This event killed 96% of marine species and 70% of terrestrial vertebrate species. The most recent mass extinction event was the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event 66 million years ago, which led to the extinction of approximately 75% of Earth species, including all non avian dinosaurs. The cause of these extinctions has been studied, and scientists have multiple explanations, ranging from asteroid impacts to large volcanic eruptions to climate change. Modern humans have been inhabiting the planet for approximately 300,000 years which is an incredibly small period of time compared to the age of the Earth. This is why humanity hasn't seen a mass extinction. However, it's not a question of if, but when one will occur. Eventually, humans will be gone as a species. However, living in a modern industrialized world has changed what may cause that extinction. Will it be a natural event or a man-made one? Let's look at some of the hypothetical possibilities. There are several natural possible causes that can create a mass extinction. The most thought of is an extraterrestrial impact, something that comes from outer space. The 66 million year ago event was said to be partially caused by an asteroid the size of Mount Everest that hit the present day Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. That size, plus the speed it impacted Earth around 40,000 miles an hour, was a recipe for disaster. And if that same sort of event happened nowadays, it would likely kill a good portion of the human population along with many other organisms. But the impact is only part of the extinction. While the initial impact will kill millions, if not billions of humans instantly, the after effects will kill more slowly. Indirectly, the asteroid would create other natural disasters, such as earthquakes and tsunamis, which would affect many areas of the planet. Debris thrown into the atmosphere would rain down as fiery fragments, igniting widespread fires. Dust and aerosols thrown into the atmosphere would block sunlight, leading to a significant drop in global temperatures, a phenomenon known as impact winter. This could last for months or even years, severely disrupting climate and agriculture. Ultimately, a majority of humans will die from this sort of event. However, a small percentage may survive, allowing for some humanity to continue. There is good news though. The probability of a large asteroid hitting Earth is around 1 in 100 million. On Earth, there is some risk pertaining to seismic activity, with one being a superplume volcano. A superplume is a large buoyant upwelling of hot rock from deep within the Earth's mantle. These massive plumes can cause significant geological and environmental changes when they reach the Earth's surface. The Permian-Triassic extinction, the largest ever to occur 252 million years ago, is linked to a superplume event known as the Siberian Traps, 
a large igneous province in what is now Siberia. The massive volcanic eruptions released vast quantities of carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere, causing rapid climate change, ocean acidification, and widespread anoxia, also known as a lack of oxygen. One area of concern today is in the United States, primarily in the Intermountain West. The Yellowstone hotspot has created a series of calderas and volcanic features over millions of years. As a North American tectonic plate moves over a stationary hotspot, it produces a trail of volcanic activity which can be seen in the Snake River Plain. The most recent and well-known caldera formed around 640,000 years ago, resulting in the current Yellowstone caldera. This eruption was one of the largest known eruptions on Earth. While this eruption wasn't responsible for a widespread extinction event, it is possible that if it were to act up, it can cause a similar incident to the 252 million year ago Siberian superplume. However, like an asteroid impact, a superplume extinction is extremely rare and likely will not occur for the foreseeable future. Naturally, Earth's climate has seen significant changes. For its history, there are very warm periods and very cold periods, such as ice ages. Humans did live through the Pleistocene Ice Age, which occurred from 120,000 to 10,000 years ago. At the time when the last ice age peaked, around 20,000 years ago, humans were becoming more intelligent species and used fire to cook foods and keep warm, which also helped them survive the cold temperatures. However, if this happened before the discovery of fire, it is quite probable that early humans would have died off. In a modern world, Climate change is associated with artificial introductions of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. While this is possible, natural climatic changes do occur, and a mixture of both may change the climate worldwide. But this isn't going to be a day after tomorrow type scenario where the Earth suddenly experiences a rapid transformation of impending doom. Climate change, both naturally and artificially induced, may take centuries to even millenniums to create any noticeable changes that may alter humanity. In addition, the time it takes allows humans to adapt to change rather than to be victims. Diseases have always posed a threat to humanity. Many ancient diseases were very deadly, including the plague of Justinian within the Byzantine Empire between the years of 541 and 542. The bacterium Yersinia pestis was spread via rats traveling among ports within the Mediterranean Sea. The plague is estimated to have killed between 25 million to 50 million people, which was about 13 to 26 percent of the world's population at that time. In Constantinople alone, it is reported that at its peak, the plague killed about 5,000 to 10,000 people per day and possibly up to 40 percent of the city's population. 800 years later, the Black Plague, caused by the same bacteria as the plague of Justinian, was one of the most catastrophic pandemics in human history. This plague killed an estimated 75 to 200 million people in Eurasia, decreasing the European population by about 30 to 60 percent. A more recent deadly pandemic was the Spanish flu of 1918. This H1N1 influenza virus pandemic infected one-third of the global population and had a high mortality rate, particularly affecting young adults. The death tolls estimated to be between 50 to 100 million people worldwide, with 675,000 people in the U.S. dying. And most recently, the COVID-19 pandemic, spread by a coronavirus, not a flu strain, killed over 7 million people in the last four years. While diseases are usually naturally induced, there is speculation that the COVID-19 pandemic was man-made and was accidentally released in a lab leak in Wuhan, China. Keep in mind that the lab leak theory is one possibility, with many scientists still believing that COVID was natural. But if this was the case, this means that diseases can be artificially made, thus creating a possibility of more pandemics associated with this, which leads to artificial causes of mass extinction. Wars have historically been something that have wreaked havoc on societies and caused death. Both 20th century world wars were deadly, with World War I killing 16 million people in total and World War II killing around 80 million people. The atomic bomb, a nuclear weapon, was used at the end of World War II 
when the U.S. bombed the two Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. This was the first and only time nuclear weapons were used. Ironically, nuclear weapons were to bring peace and deterrence rather than using them. And pretty much, this has been successful. However, there were some tensions. The closest the world has ever come to nuclear war is generally considered to be the Cuban Missile Crisis in October of 1962. This 13-day confrontation between the United States and the Soviet Union was triggered by the discovery that the Soviet Union had placed nuclear missiles in Cuba, just 90 miles from the U.S. coast. Fortunately, this crisis was ultimately resolved when Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev agreed to remove the missiles from Cuba in exchange for a U.S. pledge not to invade Cuba and a secret agreement to remove U.S. missiles from Turkey. In a 21st century globalized world, the threat of possible nuclear wars is ever so slightly increasing, mainly because of tensions in areas such as the Middle East, the Korean Peninsula, and with Russia and the ongoing war in Ukraine. While this threat is serious, any use of nuclear warfare would be catastrophic to both sides. A full-out nuclear war would result in millions upon millions of deaths, initially with the blast and later with people getting radiation sicknesses. Also, large-scale nuclear explosions could send vast amounts of soot and debris into the atmosphere, blocking sunlight and causing a significant drop in global temperatures. Reduced sunlight and lower temperatures would devastate global agriculture, leading to food shortages and famine. Pretty much, this gloomy scenario would lead to an artificial mass extinction. As a human species, we might be our own worst enemy. While the global population is still increasing, it's not everywhere. In the developed world, which includes North America, Europe, East Asia, and Australia and New Zealand, total fertility rates, which is a measure of the average amount of children a woman will have during her childbearing years, has been steadily decreasing. The magic number for population replacement is 2.1 but most developed nations are below that. In fact, the East Asian nations of Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan have among the lowest total fertility rates in the world, below 1.4. Also, many European nations such as Italy, Spain, and Poland have very low total fertility rates. With those low numbers and without immigration, these nations will see a substantial population decrease. As of now, the developing world which includes all of Africa and parts of South America and Asia, have total fertility rates above 2.1, with Nigeria having the highest at 6.64. But in the next 75 years, even developing nations are projected to see lowering total fertility rates, and by the year 2080, the world population is predicted to peak at about 10.1 billion. After that, the population will likely start gradually decreasing. While this decrease won't be sudden, it will become visible hundreds of years afterwards. But there are a lot of projections, with one bleak one showing that by the year 3000, the population will be close to zero at current fertility rates. Other more optimistic projections take other determinants into consideration, including a rise in global total fertility rates and health aspects such as an increased life expectancy. The reality of the matter is that in the next 1,000 years, humanity will either be gone or more potent than ever. Obviously, we won't see that day considering that all humans on Earth right now will be dead in the next 120 years. The fate of humanity is uncertain. Humans may only have hundreds of years left or millions of years. No one really knows what the future has in store. However, one thing is certain and it's that planet Earth will be gone in around 5 billion years. The sun will exhaust its hydrogen fuel and become a red giant, eventually engulfing the inner planets, possibly including Earth. This process will significantly alter the Earth's conditions, making it uninhabitable long before the planet itself might be destroyed or altered. So technically, if humans still inhabited the Earth at that time, extinction would occur. One curveball is technology. In the far future, if humans are still here, our species may become so advanced that we are able to travel to other planets easily and even other solar systems. 
With that prospect, perhaps humanity is infinite. What do you think will cause human extinction? I'd love to hear your opinion on the matter, so leave your feedback in the comment section below. That concludes this week's episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, you like my other content, so be sure to subscribe to my channel, Our World, Our Planet, Our Home. Until next time.